I'm from Togo, a very beautiful country in West Africa. It is home to about 8 million people. And I'm sure that most of the people in this room have never heard of Togo. Well, the very first time that I noticed that my country was being mentioned by many media internationally was in 2012, when thousands of Togolese women organized a rally, and at the rally, they declared a sex strike. Of course, made a lot of people made fun of the situation. Some people took it seriously. But there was a story behind that. What compelled women from a society where sex is one of the most taboo topics to come up front and make such a bold move? The women in Togo wanted to compel the men to take action against the oldest military regime in Africa. This is Sivanus Olympio. He's the very first president of Togo. He's the one who fought for our independence, and in 1963, he was killed by this guy, Eadimanya Simbe. Eadimanya Simbe was a soldier in the French colonial army, and he was hired to kill, Simbe, uh, to kill Sivanus Olympio. He ruled Togo for 38 years, and it was 38 years of brutal dictatorship. When Eadimanya was president, people had to line up from his presidential palace to his, um, to his office to clap for him four times a day. In the morning when he's going to work, at noon when he takes his lunch break, when he resumes work at 2 p.m., and in the evening when he goes home. If you are caught not clapping, you're not caught not stopping when his convoy is going through, you're gonna get arrested uh, and potentially killed. Every weekend, people had to wear uniforms with his pictures on it to dance for him. Civil servants were obliged to dance for him to say how fantastic he is and how great and blessed we are to have a president like him. Of course, many people challenged him, and those people were either arrested, tortured, or killed. Hundreds of people died under the Adema regime. When he arrested my father in the 1970s once, they tied electric cord on his genitalia, and they electrocuted him until he lost his voice completely. They broke 13 of his lips, nine of his toes. It took him about six months to learn to walk again. But my dad was one of the luckiest guys, because many of his comrades died in prison. One beautiful morning of Saturday, 2005, Ayadema died. And for us, the people of Togo, it was a relief. Like, we don't have to clap every day for this guy anymore. But then, that same evening, his son, Fonya Simbe, took over. He did a coup. He was 38 years old himself. And the following morning, the president of France, Jacques Chirac, said, and I quote, in Eadimania Simbe, France has lost a great friend, and I lost a personal friend. Indeed, Eadimania was a personal friend of Chirac. As Bourgui, Robert Bourgui, a very renowned French politician and lawyer said, he himself collected in cash millions of euros from African dictators to Jacques Chirac and other presidents before him. And Eadema was like the perfect puppet for the French colonial in power in Africa. He was used to destabilize many African countries. He was used to finance and to provide resources for rebel groups, whether it is in Angola, Sierra Leone, Liberia, Burkina Faso, Cote d'Ivoire, you name it. Eadema was in every single dirty business. So when he died, it was you know, the duty of the French empire to see his regime survive, and putting his son to replace him was the best choice they could have. A few weeks ago, French business mogul, Vincent Bolloré was indicted in France over allegations of corruption in Togo. This is the very first time this is happening. And he's been indicted over his participation in how he helped the regime in Togo maintain their grips on power through fraud. And in exchange, they gave him the concession of our port for 30 good years. The French, there are French politicians, French businessmen that are taking advantage of the situation to whom their, public, uh, their personal interests, their business interests matter more than our lives. So we, the people of Togo, have to endure the brutal dictatorship of these guys so that they can get away with their businesses. When Eadema, killed, when Eadema was killed, died, sorry, not killed, he died naturally, they said. When he died in 2005 and his son did a coup, they organized fraudulent elections. Soldiers were sent to polling stations. They stole ballots, and they declared his son winner. Of course, the people of Togo stood against it. There was a lot of violence in the country. The militaries went home to home, arresting, killing people. They massacred and butchered over 1,000 people. But according to the United Nations, at least 500 people died. 500 people in a country of 5 million back then. It's like 30,000 Americans getting killed for one man to become president. And to this day, no one has been held accountable. 
But the horror of 2005 was what pushed me into politics. I was 15 years old, and I remember saying that if this is the last thing that I have to do before I die, I will see this man fall, because someone who has to kill 500 of my countrymen to become president does not deserve to rule us. So I founded with a couple of friends the Four Must Go movement a few years later, and I was 19 years old. I was the youngest, but I was interested with leadership, and I became the spokesperson of the movement. For us, it's about having a revolution. We don't believe in any other way than preparing the people to seize power for themselves. We don't think that the classic political parties were going on with business, were going to help us reach our goal. So we mobilized people on the ground, and we started demanding change. We started defying the regime. We started calling them and exposing their scandals. In 2014, Politicians in the opposition party introduced a bill about electoral reform, and uh, they wanted the reinstatement of the term limits, which Ayadema removed before he died because he wanted to rule for a lifetime. But then um, all the members of the ruling party, of course, voted against it. So I published the personal phone numbers, cell phone, home phone, email, and I asked people to call them and ask why they voted against the term limits that we, the people of Togo, voted ourselves for by referendum in 1992 by over 97%. I placed the first phone call myself. I called the leader of the parliament, the majority leader, and after asking him why he voted against this, he said his reply was, you're stupid, you're foolish, you're crazy, and he rang up on me. Well, I put the conversation online, it went viral in the Togolese communities, and in the following days, people stormed them with massive calls. So they organized a session at the parliament, and they said how this little foolish girl published their numbers online, and for three days they haven't been sleeping, people have been bothering them, they have to switch their lines, and they were really pissed, and they said that we were trying to terrorize them, and they would not take it. But that was the moment that I realized that we have a powerful gun, and I told my people in a video, and I say, when the government shoots, they reach one person at a time. When we shoot, we reach millions at a time because we have a more powerful weapon, and that is internet. And as long as we have that, we are going to win this struggle. Last year, Togolese people responded to the call of a politician to start uh, uh, protesting for the reinstatement of the 1992 constitution. The government brutalized them, it's packed anger, and we the activists, we call on people to come on the streets, and we call the politicians to come together and unite so that we kick these guys out. That was the beginning of the former Togo revolution. Hundreds of thousands of Togolese people have been taking the streets intermittently for the past 10 months demanding that Fonya Simbi steps down. His family has ruled Togo for 51 years, and of course they have been brutalizing people, they have been arresting people, hundreds are in prison, many have fled the country, and in Togo there is an, uh, an, uh, an unofficial curfew right now. But in the midst of all that violence, I think about the resilience of my people, the sacrifices of all those who have put their lives in the line, our comrades who are in prison, who we have not been able to see for the past few months and who are being tortured, and the strength of Togolese women who started this right from the beginning, and I know that we cannot give up because giving up is an act of treason to those who have sacrificed themselves for us. So the people of Togo are having a revolution, and I call it an non-televised revolution because we may be small, we speak French, nobody really cares, we are too small for them, but I want everybody to pay attention and to help us win this struggle. We will defeat the oldest military regime in Africa, and we want you to work with us. Thank you.